HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, Youth Services Librarian Denise Coffrin calls it a career. The latest on Hiller Sports and Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. At the Board of Selectmen meeting this past week, Lycan Bioscience LLC updated the selectmen on their interest in moving to Hopkinton. Uh, my name is Lynn Tokarczyk. I'm Government Incentives Consultant representing Lycan Bioscience. I'm here with Tony Rattuno, CEO of Lycan Bioscience, and David Dartell, um, right in back of me, CFO uh, of Lycan Bioscience. Uh, Lycan Bioscience is an emerging manufacturer of cell and gene therapies, very new uh, generation of uh, therapeutics. Uh, so new that there's only four approved currently, uh, but gaining a lot of traction and it's, it's the next generation of uh, therapeutics uh, over and above beyond what we've seen before from biologics. Company plans to lead the way in manufacturing clinical products out of the Hopkinton site uh, for immunotherapies of cancer and other uh, illnesses. I will say that our, our sole focus right now is oncology. Uh, that's where the greatest need is. Uh, that's where we see the greatest need. So that's, that's where we'll focus. Uh, immunotherapy is on a cutting edge of treatments that are less invasive than tra uh, traditional cancer therapies, and they offer a promise of greater patient safety. Uh, this is personalized medicine for the most part, so we're using patient cells, patient's blood, uh, treat the blood at what would be the Hopkinton site, send it back to the patient very quickly very little inventory or no, zero inventory and then reinfuse the reinjected back into the patient lights the patient's own immune system up to whatever uh, cancer they're fighting breast colon lung whatever the case may be uh, so the safety profiles are are, are very good uh, like in bioscience plans to choose locations for its clinical manufacturing operations which we have we have chosen and we've chosen Hopkinton uh, specifically at this point in time 97 South Street uh, facility uh, we've conducted searches in and out of the state, primarily in Arizona and uh, South Carolina to this point. I will say that we've done a, a national search. Uh, we've ended up with a, a small bucket of, of sites uh, that really fit the bill. One being that why would we choose Hopkinton? Uh, because access to airports is critical. So we have Logan and we have uh, TF Green and we have Worcester. Uh, why? Because the patients, you know, we had the opportunity to work on the first approved product. Uh, so we have six years of experience with uh, the first uh, cell therapy approved for prostate cancer called Provenge. Uh, it was approved in 2010. Uh, since there's been two more. Uh, but very quick time frame back to the patient. In the case of Provenge, it was only 18 hours. Once manufacturing was complete, back to the patient, wherever they were in the country. We did 85% of our production out of a site south of Atlanta, uh, and those products, we did 80% of production out of Atlanta. We had a site in Seal Beach, California also. They took mainly California. But we could have distributed 95% of our products, even with an 18-hour time frame. So, uh, so access to airports are critical. Um, the access to talent uh, in Massachusetts, obviously, and we have a a lot of built-in customers right here in uh, the Cambridge Metro West area. So. so a TIF does not apply to the existing building or the taxes that the town is currently receiving. Again, it's only on the, the new taxes. And it's a minimum of five years, a maximum of 20 years for any particular length of a TIF, as you may know, um, in a minimum exemption of 1% and the maximum is 100%. So the town is in the position 
based on that capital expenditure of approximately $10 million on whatever the assessed value is determined to be, the new assessed value, to collect new tax revenue um, over a period of time. So again, it's very important um, that it's uh, to say, again, that it's a discount only on projected future taxes and there is no loss to the community. Uh, how about biohazard classifications on site? Anything like that that our fire department? The biohazard, uh, be all BL1, BL2. I mean, these products are taken right in the, uh, most of the patients get their blood drawn right in the Red Cross or any uh, common area in any hospital. So, so nothing uh, extreme or? No, and even, even the vaccines, whatever we use, whatever uh, we need to do, uh, whatever antigens we're using will not be uh, put nothing above a BL2 for sure, but likely all BL1. Uh, all of our waste, because again, it's compact, will all be carted away. The board also unanimously approved a trail coordination management committee. The uh, TC, let's see, what's that? Trails coordination and management committee shall consist of seven members who are Hoppington residents and appointed by the Board of Selectmen. Initial members shall be appointed to one, two, and three-year terms to achieve staggered terms, and all members appointed thereafter will serve three-year terms. No member may serve more than three consecutive terms. The membership shall be as follows. Four members at large, one member who is recommended by the Parks and Recreation Commission, one member who is recommended by the Conservation Commission, and one member who is recommended by the Planning Board. Committees organizations recommending members may recommend more than one for consideration, and those recommended need, need not be members of the recommending body. All members shall have a demonstrated interest in the development, management, and use of public trails. One member or associate member who also has expertise in facilitation and communication is desirable. The Board of Selectmen may appoint up to five associate, those would be non-voting members if desired, in order to broaden the perspective, representation, or to facilitate the charge of the committee. No associate member shall be appointed until one year after a quorum of full members has been appointed so as to allow for time for the committee to fully consider and clarify its purpose and charge. Believe it or not, we are towards the middle of the high school sports winter season. Here's a look at some of the happenings from this past week. On Friday, January 11th, Hiller's Boys Basketball captured a 57-33 victory over Millis. Senior Brendan Kelly netted 17 points in the win. Pass over to the near side, here comes Hamblett. Hamblett looking for a shot here into the right circle, leaves it in the slot, and there's a goal! What a beauty of a pass by Hamblett! On Saturday, January 12th, Hiller's boys hockey tied 3-3 with Norwood. Hiller's led 2-0 after the first period, but surrendered three goals in the second. To the left off the stick of Hamblett, who's trying to poke it through. Out in front, Walsh, Simos, there's Walsh, and that's it! We are tied back up, three to three. Sean Walsh with a beauty. Sean Walsh netted the final goal of the game to tie things up with 524 left to go in the second period. On Tuesday, January 15th, the Hillers boys basketball team took care of business versus Medfield. The Hillers won by a final of 62 to 48. The following day, the Hillers boys basketball team fell to Somerville 48 to 36. Here are the current standings for Hiller winter sports teams. Boys basketball, five wins, four losses. Girls basketball, four wins, five losses. Indoor track is currently undefeated at four and zero. Oh. Girls hockey, three wins, six losses. Boys hockey, seven wins, two losses, and two ties. Girls swimming, seven wins, one loss. Boys swimming, six wins, and two losses. Still to come on HCAM News, Hopkinton Public Library celebrates the career of Youth Services Librarian Denise Coffrin 
And Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider, plus much more. A whole lot ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. So when we first decided to go ahead with the fostering, um, we spoke at length to one of the behavioural specialists to essentially find a dog that would fit in with our lifestyle and that we could truly help. He needs to be in a home where he can just have some love and some confidence installed in him. The first time that Arnold, like I say, pricked his ears and actually came to us and wagged his tail um, was incredible. It really melted my heart to think that he had become that comfortable with us and, you know, opened his heart up to us. Like fostering a dog doesn't mean that you have to give up all of your life commitments. It is something yeah. that can fit around your schedule. I knew it would be incredible to foster a dog and to see them go home for the first time. But actually knowing how much help that you are giving these dogs has been, it has been life changing. Please visit baypathhumane.org to join our foster family. Welcome back to HCAM News. After 12 years of service to the Hopkinton Public Library, Youth Services Librarian Denise Coffrin will be calling it a career at the end of the month. Fellow staff members, town officials, and many community members recently gathered to celebrate Denise's wonderful career. After 12 years of service to the Hopkinton Public Library, Youth Services Librarian Denise Coffrin will be retiring at the end of the month. There was recently a celebration to honor her wonderful career. Oh, well, it's been the best 12 years. Um, I have a fabulous, fabulous support staff here. Everybody has been wonderful. And I will miss them terribly. They, they, I have uh, in the children's room. I have um, Donna and Nancy and Carol and Nia, and the, I couldn't run the place without them. I really couldn't. All right. And um, what's it like to have everybody here today? Uh, just kind of celebrate your um, excellent career. Oh well, it's. It's, it's humbling. I'm, I'm delighted to see some of the people who've come in so far and um, it just warms my heart. Um, one of the best things about working here is having so many children come in and, and touching them and helping them, guiding them in their reading and having them come back for more. That's the best. All right, terrific. Um, and uh, so, what's your uh, retirement plans? Any fun vacations coming up? Well, I have, I'm going to Florida in March, and I have a, a fall vacation planned. And um, but I'd like to do some volunteering and probably help the friends here, and um, maybe take some courses. Uh, there's this lifelong learning program that um, has a lot of wonderful courses, and I think that sounds like a fun thing to do because no homework and papers. <laughs> Alright, well congratulations on a wonderful career. Thank you so much. I think, um, I know I know. with all the kids in the room, it, it, there is going to be some level of everybody's doing their own thing, but for the adults anyway, um, if I could just say a few words, and Denise, if it's not going to embarrass you too much to have you up here with me. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, this is such a, gr a great turnout and I, I can't say I'm surprised to see such a great turnout. I think everybody probably more or less knows me, but I'm Heather, I'm the library director. Um, and I want to say thank you so much to everybody for coming out tonight to help us celebrate 12 years of Mrs. K instilling a, a love of reading and learning for the children of Hopkinton. Um, I've worked with Denise for about four and a half years now. And in that time, I have come to know her as an intensely dedicated, committed, passionate, knowledgeable librarian. Um, she is someone who really wants things to be just right for the community because she understands how important her work is. The children's room is the foundation 
of any public library. You know, it is where we develop not only lifelong library users, hopefully, but lifelong learners, and where we give people that foundation of literacy skills and the thirst for knowledge that generates curiosity, that motivates people lifelong to engage with their world and be active, talented, competent adults. And Denise has helped probably thousands of children in her time here along that journey. Um, the people gathered in this room representing just the merest fraction of people um, who she's helped. The kindergartners she began working with back in 2007 are now juniors and seniors in high school. She's mm -hmm. seen an entire class through their whole primary school career. And in that time, she's led story times. She's supervised stuffed animal sleepovers, which I don't know if you've seen the photos. Those can get quite rowdy. <laughs> and of course, she has run Harry Potter events at every possible opportunity. Just my arm. <laughs> We've actually got Hogwarts on there. Um, she's launched enthusiastic readers from the children's room book clubs. Uh, there have been groups of kids who have gone through the book clubs year after year after year who have grown in their reading as they have grown um, along with Mrs. K. She's run a dozen successful summer reading programs, no mean feat. She's welcomed kindergartners to the children's room every spring, in many cases giving them their very first library card. And she's built relationships with the children of Hopkinton, not only as patrons, but as volunteers, uh, a number of whom are in this room today. Um, there are a lot of accomplished young people who got one of their early tastes of responsibility, shelving books. Well, not quite right in this room, but in a children's room <laughs> in the library. We also now, through Denise's support, have older teenagers who are coming back into the room, running events, sharing their passions with their younger neighbors and really engaging with their community. And of course I have to mention the building renovation. Um, when Denise worked with her colleagues to move the entire library into our temporary space and then move it all back in here and then works to grow and expand our services, our programs here in this building, which is a truly monumental feat and something that really is worth being very, very proud of. Sorry, notes. Um, many of the children Denise worked with will remember the relationship she built with them for years to come. Um, the things that I hear, you know, I know that there is that wonderful relationship and bond and people have been really affected by Denise. Many of their parents will gratefully recall Denise's help when, say, they came in the children's room in a panic because they were mystery reader the next day and they didn't have a book yet. Or when they just needed that perfect book to turn on their reluctant reader to a love of reading. Or when they needed that perfect book to get their very enthusiastic reader to stop reading the same series over and over and over <laughs> and try something new. Denise has a truly uncanny ability. I'm still in awe of it. You can walk up and tell her what you're looking for, and she doesn't even need to touch the computer most of the time. She can not only tell you two or three or four great options, but she can walk you to the stacks and pull them off the shelf. She does not need the library catalog most of the time. She is the library catalog for this children's room. And it's, it's really a testament to her love of this literature and love of this work. So. Um, She's left her mark on this community and this library in so many ways. I've barely scratched the surface. I know we have people who are eagerly waiting for the cake, so I'm not going to uh, go on about everything she's done because it would take a very long time. But if you look in the shelves in this room, I mean, you see they're bursting with books that are exciting to draw kids into the world of reading and learning. If you look at our events calendar, you'll see many new and wonderful programs that have been added since we renovated alongside time-tested standbys that are perennially popular. If you look around this room right now, we have a room full of people who all took time out of their evening to come here tonight because in some way, Mrs. K touched every one of you. And if you look around the room itself and beyond the people to the physical room, this space is full of little touches, Denise's ideas,
that she pushed for during the process because she wanted to make this a welcoming and comfortable space for our youngest patrons. Um, the whole room, everything that we're seeing today is a reflection of Denise's work and dedication through 12 great years at this library. So, on behalf of the community, on behalf of your colleagues, on behalf of the trustees, thank you, Denise, for your dedication to the town and the library. Thank you for the energy and the passion and the ideas you have brought to this department for the last 12 years. We are grateful for your contributions. We wish you the very best at retirement. And in recognition of the impact you've had on the community, the staff wanted to give the community the opportunity to tangibly appreciate um, or demonstrate their appreciation to you. So um, thanks to their efforts and the contributions of many, many people to Hopkins and beyond, we have a little something, which you can open now if you want. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> which I can. So what this is, is we have collected from patrons, uh, colleagues, thoughts, memories, well wishes, comments for you to take with you as you go into retirement. Oh, that's great. Thank you. This is, this is wonderful. This is awesome. And if there's anybody in the room who hasn't contributed, she's here through the end of January, so we can keep adding. <laughs> Just talk to the staff. Um, but really, I mean, that says volumes. <laughs> oh, it, it certainly does, and I, I can't wait to actually yeah. go through it up. And I see lots of Harry Potter things in here. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and with that, unless... Um, I just want to thank everybody here who's, who's come um, today, and I've had a wonderful 12 years here. I've enjoyed um, every single minute of it. Um, I've loved seeing your children grow up, some of whom came in in, in utero, and I've, I've, <laughs> I've seen them go through. I've lost a lot of people to Anne downstairs and young adult, but um, that's how it should be. Um, if any of you ever got an email from me um, a pro on my professional account, um, most librarians have a little tag at the bottom and we have a quote from some book and, and mine of course is, well that's what Hermione does, when in doubt, go to the library, which is the wisdom of Ron Weasley. Um, and I don't think you have to be in doubt to go to the library, but when you want to know something, it's the best place to go and Hermione knows that. And um, I'll just end with the fact that Harry and Ron would have really been up a creek without a paddle if Hermione didn't read. <laughs> so. I think I think everybody's been waiting for the cake after the talk. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, January 18th at 5 p.m., Boston area singer and songwriter Chris Lee performs his various musical styles on a new episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. And at 9 p.m., Cheryl Peralt sits down with Maycomber Center co-founder Ben Draper on a new episode of Meet Your Neighbor. On Monday, January 21st at 7.30 p.m., Hopkinton Superintendent Dr. Carol Cavanaugh sits down with Hopkinton Schools Buildings and Grounds Director Tim Person on a new episode of Highlights from the Hill. On Tuesday, January 22nd at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers boys basketball team takes on the Medway Mustangs live on HCAM Ed. And at 7 p.m., the Zoning Advisory Committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Friday, January 25th at 1 p.m., a special Board of Selectmen's meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers girls basketball team takes on the Holliston Panthers, live on HCAM Ed. And also on HCAM Ed, the Hillers swimming versus Natick and the Hillers ice hockey versus Norwell game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv slash connect where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. 
Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care, and we'll talk to you again soon. Ball gets into Hardenbrook, now in the hands of Cho. There it is. She drives, yes. gets the open layup, yes. up and in. And one opportunity for Lauren Cho. Lauren Cho comes through big but would miss the and one. And it remained tied at 38. Final seconds, Dedham with the final possession. It gets by the press. Four seconds left for her. She oh, hands it off, Turner for three. Oh, almost <laughs> just a bit off the mark. And it looks like we are gonna go to overtime. 12 seconds left in overtime. Dedham has a 44 to 42 lead. 16 seconds. Need, need to get a, need a, need a bucket. There it is. Joe drives her layup up and in and one. <laughs> Lauren Cho does it again, but unfortunately would miss the and one. And we head to a second overtime, tied up at 44. Right off the bat in the second overtime, Millie Sensini knocks down a three, and that would be all the Hillers needed as they take the win, 51 to 46. An impressive victory for the Hillers, and they put an end to their three game losing streak. Hopkinton is now 4-3 and three on the season, while Dedham falls to 5-3. and three. Perhaps this is the beginning of a run by the Lady Hillers. In the game, Lauren Cho put up 10 points and 9 rebounds, while Millie Sensini also contributed 10 points in the double overtime victory. <laughs>